and in this video I will be demonstrating the importance of ensuring that your e-commerce platform is secure and the potential risk for harm that can come about if it isn't. Now, for the purposes of this demonstration I've set up a lab environment which consists of an installation of a, a free-to-use open source uh, e-commerce platform known as OS Commerce and a Kali Linux VM which I'll be using to attack this web app. Now, one of the first things that I notice while browsing this app is that if I append a single quotation mark to the end of this URL parameter here, it breaks the database query on the back end and provides me with an error message in the web browser. And what this indicates to me is that I, I might be able to use a utility that we use called SQL map to exfiltrate data from the, the back end database. So I'm gonna go over here to Kali and I'm gonna use SQL map. I'm gonna tell it the URL I want to attack is this. And so we can see here that it was able to use this technique to retrieve the names of the different databases. So I'm just going to go over there and put it in my notes. Now, the only one out of these five which um, is, isn't a default MySQL database name is OSC. And so I'm going to take that and I'm going to use the same, uh, same technique to attack the OSC database and dump the name of the names of the tables. And so we can see here that we're able to get all 50 tables from the OSC database, which I am also going to put over here in my notes. And the first one that jumps out at here, uh, ju jumps out at me here is administrators. And so I'm going to go back here and try and attack the administrators table and ask it to try and dump, dump the contents of that table. And so we can see here that the this is the contents of the administrators table in the OSC database. Um, add over here in my notes as well. And we can see that um, the, the user password here is not stored in plain text. It's hashed, uh, which is a good security practice. However, if, um, if the administrator password isn't a secure password, if it's a commonly used password found in a word list, then it can possibly be cracked using a tool called John the Ripper. And so we can just verify that we, it's a known hash, uh, known hash type, MD5 WordPress right here. So John should be able to crack that. I'm going to put it into a text file and I'm going to run John, pass it in the word list. And I'm going to tell it I want to crack the admin hash. Okay, so we it returned the, the word Pennywise as the password. And so I'm just going to go over here into my creds and I'm going to put that in there. So if we run the SQL map again, and instead of dumping the administrators uh, table, we're going to dump customer. And See here that there is one entry, there's one customer, just a test customer I put in. We have his email address, we have his password, it's hashed, it looks like it's the same hashing algorithm as the admin password, which we can verify in hash identifier once again, and yeah, it's MD5 WordPress. So I'm going to put that into text file again, and we are going to run John the Ripper on that and it comes back with one two three one two three so now <clears throat> at this point what uh, a legitimate threat actor would do is it, they would dump the the contents of this get all of the customers uh usernames and and hash passwords see which ones they could crack then use those those username password pairs uh, in a technique that's known as credential stuffing whereby they would throw the cracked passwords with their usernames at any and all services, web services that they could think of, uh, things like Facebook, Instagram, Amazon, banking info, uh, and a number of other places as well, and see what sticks. And then at that point, you can also, uh, you, you have a, a lot of customer PII, it's called personal identifiable information, things like uh, you know their, their email address, their, their first last name, their, their date of birth. Um, we see a, a column here for address ID. Uh, so if we go back to here, we have an address book table, which we can
jump. And we can see here that the customer's ID of one matches with customer's ID of one. So we can cross-reference, we can get their, their street address, um, you know, postcode, all, all of that fun stuff. And uh, that information can all be sold on marketplaces on the dark web um, to be used in subsequent phishing and, and, and social engineering attacks against people. And uh, yeah, so this concludes the video. And uh, I, I just, in closing, I wanna mention that while these, these might be some, some relatively straightforward uh, exploit vectors and vulnerabilities, but we do commonly uncover these in routine web assessments uh, in web apps. And hopefully we can work with you guys to ensure that legitimate threat actors can't find them in yours. Thank you very much.